When you're using an inclinometer to measure neck motion, it's sometimes it's hard to tell just by using one what your motion is. Somebody can bend their head forward and they might keep their back straight. Or sometimes they might bend their head forward and their back is moving. The numbers will change drastically. So we always use two of these. One being here and one being here. That way if they do move their back, we subtract the bottom number from the top and you get the true difference between the two. It makes a difference where you put the first one on the head. So to discover the exact spot, we start here and draw an imaginary line between the corner of the eye and where the cartilage of the ear meets the head. If somebody's wearing glasses, you can simply put it on the glass stick. But since Joey does not, we're going to place this here and turn the dial until the black arrow lines up with a blue fluid. At that point, put this on the head and move it until you get the same black arrow lining up with the zero. And that's how you locate the first one. As for the second one, if you leave this midline, and I'll just turn Joey around so you can see what I'm talking about. If you leave this midline and Joey moves his head back, watch what happens to the inclinometer. It will shift down the spine, which is not what we want. So to locate this, we're going on C7 in the middle of the inclinometer and moving it just to the side of the head. That way when he goes backwards, the inclinometer won't move. So I'll just turn him back so you can see what the numbers are. At this point, We'll zero the inclinometer, so that black arrow is on the zero. And we'll take our first one and put the black arrow on the zero. And this is the starting point for measuring flexion and extension. Everything's zeroed out. It's exactly where it should be. And now I'll ask Joey to bend his head forward as far as he can. And we can read the fluid at the top as about 50 degrees, and the bottom is about 15 degrees. So when he comes back up again, 50 minus 15 is 35, and that's the true motion between the first and second inclinometer. Now we can also immediately go to the back once this is at zero. So bend backwards as far as you can. And so the top one is reading about 60 degrees, the bottom is reading about 15 degrees. So 60 minus 15 would be 45 degrees. That's flexion and extension. For the AMA guidelines, we'd be doing this three times, and hopefully they'd be within 5%, 5 degrees or 